Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the 1111 Matrix Code Revealed. As always, I'm your host, Garrett King. Today's episode is going to be exciting. It's going to reveal so much. (laughs) Uh, A much deeper rabbit hole um, than, I mean, more, more so than what I've already gone down. This is even going deeper. And it's amazing the connections that I'm finding, uh, the connections that are being revealed, and how this work that I'm doing actually is going to (laughs) cross over into the work of someone else um, who I've already reached out to. This person is more than willing to come on the show and look at the information. that you know, I'm going to show you today. Uh, I asked this person whose name I will reveal later, um, but I asked them, you know, do you want to, do you want to maybe talk and and discuss this information kind of one on one off the record, uh, just to kind of get your your take on it? And he said, nope, let's do it on your show. So he is, he's more than willing to come on here uh, onto this. Um, YouTube channel and have a discussion. So that's going to be kind of cool. So this is going to probably happen in the next two weeks or so. So again, I'll I'll reveal closer to the end who I'm talking about. Um, Still need to schedule a time with them, but they have agreed to talk and and come on here. So that's cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and start really quickly from the very beginning of what I've just recently started discovering here. So just some odd connections, very interesting stuff going on. Okay, so as always, I am just intrigued by the numbers, the numbers that were revealed through the process of taking 333 times 1111, getting 369, 963, adding 1111 back to it, to getting a new number, and then adding 369, 963 to that new number and every number thereafter. So I'm always trying to find more that can be revealed through these numbers. <laughs> and this, this is going to go deep, folks. I mean, we've gone down a rabbit hole pretty deep, but this is going to go even deeper. So I was just, again, you know, I, I don't know where these thoughts or whims come from to try you know, these things, but they just come to me. So I I try it and see what happens. So the other day I was looking at the numbers that were generated and I began to wonder what would happen if you took those numbers and divided them by 11. Well, interestingly enough, every single number will divide by 11 perfectly with nothing left over. Okay. So for example, the first number, 371074 divided by 11, gives us the number 33734. Okay. Now, looking at that number, if we take the code or the key, I guess I should say, of the number four and look at just the last four digits and add the remaining number to this, So you're going to take this three and add it to the end. So four and three is seven. So we wind up with the number 3737. Now, keep in mind, remember how the numbers are going up and down by 37. But let's look at the next number. 741037 divided by 11 gives us 67367. Move the six to the end. So add six to seven, and that gives us the number 7373. Now, as you'll notice, these numbers are mirror opposites of one another. And then the third number gives us one zero one zero zero zero. Again, put the one at the end. So moving this one over to the end is going to force us to lose the first zero and we wind up with the number one, zero, one, zero. And then the fourth number 
will give us one, three, four, six, three, three. Again, move or take the last four. So four, six, three, three, add 13 to the end because that's the two remaining. And we wind up with four, six, four, six. And I'm sorry, actually, let's go back to this, the third one. I said it wrong. The last four numbers are a thousand. You would move 10 to the end. Okay. So there's four numbers there. So we're going to move one zero to the end. That gives us 10, 10. Sorry. Said that wrong, but that, that is correct. So you'd move 10 to the end. And then the next number again gives us the four, six, four, six. Now I want you to pay close attention to something here. So see how we have three, seven, three, seven, and then the next number is 7373, three, seven, three. then we have 1010 10, and 4646, four, six, 8282, 1919, and then we get to 5555. Five, five, five. And then look at the next number. The next number is 9191. Well, that's interesting because that's the mirror opposite of this number. 1919 backwards, 9191. This number, 2828, is the opposite of 8282. 6464 is the opposite of 4646. They're reversed. And then we get down here to 101. Well, that's technically what this number would be reversed. It starts with a zero, so it doesn't calculate. You can't add it there. So you're left with 101. Okay, now check this out. So now take the number, so let's just take the first number, 3737 three, plus its mirror opposite, 7373, and we have 1111. Okay, let's just go down to this one, 1919. So 1919 plus its mirror opposite, 9191, gives us 1111. Now, yes, I realize there's a zero there, but again, use the key of the number four. Take the last four numbers and the number that's remaining and move it to the end, and you have 1111. So all of these numbers will do that. So if you, if you look here, we start with 3737. It goes through the cycle to where we end up uh, back to the beginning. And then it starts with 3737 again, 7373, 1010, 4646, and so on. And then it repeats. It's another repeating cycle. But something else happens here. So when you take these numbers and divide them by 11, the new number that's generated also follows that same sequence where, uh, let's go back here. So remember how the first two digits went four and then seven and then zero. And then we had that pattern of 369, 258, 1470, and it repeated. Same thing happens. Okay. So four, seven, zero, and then we have three, six, nine, two, five, eight, one, four, seven, zero, three, six, nine, two, five, eight, one, four, seven, zero, and so on. It's a repeating pattern. So <laughs> it really stood out to me that there there really has to be something to this pattern, this one, four, seven, two, five, eight, three, six, nine, or or backwards. 369-258-147. There has to be something to that pattern. So over here, I just took 1 plus 4 plus 7 equals 12. 1 and 2 reduces to 3. 2 plus 5 plus 8 equals 15. 1 and 5 reduces to 6. And 369, or 3 plus 6 plus 9 equals 18. And 1 and 8 is 9, so we're back to 369. But now check this out. When you take these numbers, 147, and add its mirror opposite. So just to show you what I'm talking about. So 147 
plus its mirror opposite is 7, 4, 1. We get the number 888. Eight, eight. Okay. 258 plus its mirror opposite, 852, gives us 1110. One, and then 369 plus its mirror opposite, 963, gives us 1332. Add all of those together. 888 plus 1110 plus 1332, you get 3330. Or technically, let's zoom in here if we can. 333. Three, three. Okay, the number that started all of this. <laughs> Now, let's start looking at some gematria connections here. So just looking at this number, 1332, because we already, we already talked about what the gematria connections of 333 were. But let's look at 1332 really quick. We get divine communication. Your mission on earth in pursuit of truth Sacred Omen, Reveal the Bible Code, Two Eclipses, We Are the Alpha Omega, and Earth is Renewed. Okay, so let's kind of break this down. Divine communication, that's what this appears to be, is some sort of divine communication through these numbers. Your mission on Earth, now is that talking about me specifically? I don't know. Or is it talking about all of us? All of our, all of us together as a, as a collective, what is our mission on this planet? Don't know. In pursuit of truth. Well, that's, <laughs> that's what this is. I'm in pursuit of, of knowledge, of truth, of what all of this means. Sacred omen. Reveal the Bible code. That's what we're doing here. We're revealing a code. Two eclipses. Why is that? Why does that stand out to me? Well, let's go back to, where was it? When I was talking about the summer solstice solar eclipses taking place, well, we only have two left. One in 2039 and one in 2058, and then we won't have another one for nearly 200 years. So we have two eclipses left. And remember, 2058 is the, the year that I'm stating or that this seems to be pointing to as a the time of the reset. So we have two eclipses left. All right. We are the Alpha Omega. That'll become important here in just a second. And Earth is renewed. Well, that's... What this sort of seems to be telling us is that through this reset, Earth will be renewed. Things will start over. Okay, now something very interesting here in the math that I just wanted to show you really quickly. So if we take the first number, 888, add it to the next number, if we were to drop this zero, and just do 888 plus 111 plus 1332 gives us the number 2331. Does it look familiar? Well, it should because it's the mirror opposite of this number right here. 1332, 2331, it's the mirror opposite. And out of curiosity, let's just see what happens. 2331 plus 1332 gives us 3663. There could be something to that. I have to look into it. I just decided to try it right now to see what it would pull up. So 3663, which technically would give us the number 99. 9 and 9 is 18 and 1 and 8 is 9. So we're again, we're back to the ruling number 9. Maybe that's the connection right there. Who knows? Okay. 
So just looking at these numbers, the way that they're there, we, they, we have this sort of forwards and backwards. It took me back to the very first number, 371074, and how the next number, 741037, is almost a mirror opposite. It's not exact mirror opposite, but it, like, this one starts with 37, this one ends with 37. We have 10 in the middle and 7 4 at the end, 7 4 at the beginning. So it's not an exact mirror opposite, but it it forms a pattern, which we've seen, and I'll actually show here in just a second. But through that process and looking at these numbers, 37, 37, 73, 73, it, it's just that that palindrome, that that idea that it's the same forwards and backwards. It kept like popping up into my head, and that led me to something known as and I don't know, I don't speak Latin, so I don't know if I'm pronouncing these words correctly or not. Forgive me for mispronouncing them. <laughs> but it's something known as the Rotos or the Sator square. And this is an ancient engraving that was, I think they found, it was first found in Pompeii. Uh, it seems to be a Christian word square that's often considered to be magical or have mystical properties to it. And as you can see here at the top, we have the word S-A-T-O-R going along the top, and then it's going along the bottom backwards, and then it's going along the sides, and it's going along the top. If <laughs> Does that call into question anything? Does that remind you of this? 371074 along the top, 371074 down the side, 371074 along the bottom, and then back up on the other side. Do you see how that connects? So let's just go back here. I wanted to look and see what these words gave, like what value did these words give using the Jewish cipher of Gematria? So the first word, Sator, Sator, I don't know how you pronounce it. I'm just kind of pronouncing it the way it looks. Gives the value of three, two, one, which reduces to six. This word, Arpo, Arapo, I don't know how you pronounce it. <laughs> but again, it gives the value of 196, which reduces to 7. And then we have the word tenant in the middle. And then what looks like the word opera, I'm sure it's pronounced slightly different, gives the value of 196. And then we have rotos at the bottom, which also gives the value of 321. Because sator and rotos, I mean, it's the same words, just forwards and backwards. It's going to have the same value in Gematri. It's the same letters. So we have 321, 196, 250, 196, 321. So that ends up forming the pattern 67776. I decided to put those numbers into a square. So we have the numbers going along the top, down the sides, along the bottom, and back up, and it just repeats. This is where it gets interesting. So the corner numbers are the ones that are different. Everything else are, are sevens and just the corners are sixes. So six and six gives us 12 and seven, three sevens gives us the number 21. That's important. That'll come up here in just a second. <laughs> But there's four sides, okay? So we have the number one, two, two, one. So one, two, two, one times four gives us four, eight, eight, four. Doesn't seem like that big of a deal, right? I mean, four, eight, eight, four. We haven't really, I don't think we've talked about that number yet. We'll get to it in a minute. So, in Latin, these words, so the first word, sator, means to sow, or it's the sower, the planter, the seeder, or as Google Translator uh, put up, it was the creator. 
okay? Which technically, someone who plants seeds, grows seeds, is a creator. They're creating a garden. They're planting the seeds of life. They're growing life, okay? They're the creator. Now, the second word, arpo, arpo, however you pronounce it, is unknown. Nobody seems to know what this word means. Uh, they think it could just be a made-up word, or it could be the name of someone in particular. And then we have the word tenant, which means to hold, keep, compre- compre- I can't even talk, comprehend, possess, or master. Okay, they all mean the same thing. So to master something is to have the knowledge of it, to possess the knowledge, to comprehend the knowledge, to keep the knowledge, to hold the knowledge. And then we have rotas, which means wheel or to rotate, turn, and I put the last one in, put into motion, okay? That's what a wheel does. It puts something into motion. To rotate, it puts it into motion. To turn something, puts it into motion, Now, let's look again at the letters in this magic square. I'm calling it a magic square. You can rearrange the letters to form, and this is in Latin. So we have the first word, and again, I don't speak Latin. I don't know how to pronounce these words. So it's either pater, pater, I don't know. And then the last word, Noster, Noster, but regardless of how you pronounce it, in Latin, it means our father. Okay, so we have P-A-T-E-R-N-O-S-T-E-R, and then the same thing going across. And there's enough letters here to do this perfectly with an A and an O left or two A's and two O's left over. We get a cross, but do you recognize this symbol? We just looked at it. It's right here. It's the same symbol. Okay. And it's the symbol for the sun. And we're seeing the same thing here. Now, remember how there's an A and an O, two A's and two O's left over. Well, A and O are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet, and they mean alpha, the beginning, and omega, the end. Okay? (laughs) Do you see where this is going? The beginning is the end, and the end is is the beginning. Okay. Now, I want to point something else out here. Let's look at these words again. To sow. Or, yeah, to sow. A sower, a planter, a cedar, the creator. To hold, keep, comprehend, possess, master, wheel, to rotate, turn, put into motion. It's almost as if we are being shown the creation story. Because again, that's what someone does. That's what the creator did, okay? Planted a seed and watched it grow. But let's go back to this number up here, 4884 which was derived from taking 1221 times four. Now, we've seen this number before, 1221. Is it any coincidence? (laughs) And I'm just going to say, no, it's not a coincidence. That 4884 minus one of the numbers that started all of this, 1111, would give us the number 3773. Remember, 37 is the 12th prime number. 73 
is the 21st prime number. And 3773 is also from the Hebrew Bible. In Genesis 1, the phrase, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, in the Hebrew version of the Bible, through gematria, gives you the value of 2701. And if you remember, 2701 plus its mirror opposite, 1072, gives you the number 3773. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is what this square is telling us. To sow, plant, create. That's exactly what the creator did. And again, it whether you want to call the, the creator, whether you want to call them the creator, whether you want to call them God, whether you want to call them the architect of the matrix, uh, whatever you want to call them, it's all the same thing, okay? If this is a simulation, someone or something created it, okay? If the creation story is the same, you know, or is, is true, then it, someone created this, okay? All right, let's move on. But you can definitely see how this is connected. I mean, this there's no denying this. The beginning, the end, it all ties back into, and the reason I said it, it's, it's no coincidence, this is telling us the beginning and the end. This right here, this equation is giving us the number 4884, and it requires, it requires the number 1111 to unlock the number 3737, or 3773. Because that's what we had to subtract from this, 4884. And if you remember back in Gematria, 1111 is the value given to the phrase, the beginning is the end and the end is the beginning. <laughs> this is by design, folks. This is by design. It cannot be denied. At this point, this simply cannot be denied. Okay, let's move on. Looking at those numbers again, 147258369, broken into three sets gives us 369, okay, as you can see here. So that means that these numbers need to be looked at in threes. Okay, so 147, 258, 369. They need to be looked at like that. Well, as I showed you with the power of nine, I had created a triangle with three, six, and nine. But what do we get when we connect one, four, and seven, or two, five, and eight? Well, let me show you. So here we have the same triangle, nine at the top, three in the lower right, six in the lower left. And I just want to point something else out here too. It's interesting, just mathematically, how the numbers that make up the number 11, when you discount 10 and one, but you just look at all the other numbers. So we have two and nine is 11, three and eight is 11, four and seven, is 11, and 5 and 6 is 11. Interesting that it goes 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's like up and down, kind of takes you back to that whole idea of the number 37. The number's going up and down by 37. Again, it's showing you a pattern, a connection. But three numbers, three numbers, Three points, think of it as three points, and then connecting those points. That's exactly what I did here. Started with three, to six, came up to nine, and connected it back. Well, when you do 
The same thing with the next set of numbers, which is 258, you get this. Triangle on its side. And then when you add or connect one, four, and seven, you get this. It's known as the Star of David. It's a six point star or hexagram and is often known as the Creator's Star or Star of Creation. Interesting. And this is just from the numbers. The numbers are, are, are showing us this pattern. Now, I wondered what would happen if I was to take this point, connect it to this point, this point to this point, this point to this point, and then came into every other point and connected those, what would happen? Well, we wind up with this. And as soon as I saw this, <laughs> a three-dimensional object popped out right in front of my face. And I was like, whoa. And if you look closely, and I'll zoom in here, I don't want you to focus on these center lines. I want you to focus just on the points. So let's go from this point to this point to this point and this point and back we have the top of a cube from this point to this point to this point and this point and back we have the front of a cube and then from this point to this point to this point to this point and back up we have the side of the cube but then you can see where we have what would be considered the back side of another cube the side of a cube, and the bottom of a cube. But we're missing the other pieces. Same up here at the top. We have the front, the side, the bottom of a cube, but we're missing the top, the other side, and the back. And you'll see this in just a second. If you're unable to see what I'm talking about, it'll make sense here in just a moment. Over here, we have another cube, and we have another cube at the bottom. And... Again, like I said, you'll see how this comes into play here in just a second. So that 3D cube showed up. Like, it just popped. That's like the first thing I saw. I wasn't looking at the lines. I just saw suddenly this cube. And this is what I mean. So just look at this spot right here. This cube will fit perfectly into that spot. This cube will fit on the side. This cube fits on top. This one fits on the other side. And this one fits on the bottom. Look what we have here. Does this look familiar? It really, really should because it's this symbol here, the same symbol that was generated from the Vedic square, gave us the cross symbol. It's another representation of the sun. The same symbol that led me through that error made through the binary code to the Credit Suisse bank, where I was pulled up this picture, <laughs> the same symbol. Is this all starting to see, are you starting to see how this is all connected? <laughs> it's insane. Okay. All right. Now I put this circle up here because I was just thinking, you know, that, that it does go zero three six nine two five eight one four seven zero. It starts over. And I was just I thought maybe what does a zero go at the top? Maybe. I don't know. So I just put a, you know, a circle there. Maybe it represents the sun. Maybe it represents the all-seeing eye. Who knows? But moving these squares back out of the way. Whoops. 
That was the third one. Actually, I think that was, yeah. Ah, it didn't matter. <laughs> Just move them out of the way. But you can see, like if you look at this point, this point, this point, and this point, you have the front of a cube, and then you have this point, this point, this point. We should have a point back here that connects back up. You can see how it starts to form that 3D effect. And I really started questioning like, okay, is this a representation of the building blocks of life? Because here we're, we're talking about the creator's star or the star of creation. We're getting these cubes. This all started from a triangle. It really goes back to the whole, um, what was it, circle in square and triangle. That whole thing that we I talked about before. You see the connections? <laughs> I mean, it's bizarre. I do want you to pay attention to something here too, really quickly, how the only number up here that does not contain a three, six, or nine is the number 47. This will come up in just a second. Okay, let's move on. So looking at these numbers or the lines from the numbers, and I mentioned triangle, circle square. Well, the one thing that's missing here is the circle. So I wondered what would happen if I extended these lines out past the triangle to a circle and we would get this. Okay. Interesting. And then remember how I talked about how the number 47 was the only one that didn't contain a three, six or nine. Well, if you take 47 plus its mirror opposite, or not plus, but take it 47 and its mirror opposite, 74, add it to, so 47, 74 added to 74, 47, the mirror, what should be like, kind of like what we did with the 371074 and 741037, we get the number 1, 2, 2, 2, 1 which if you remember is the date that I did this calculation here showing how these things were connected through the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, gave us in J Jewish Gematria 1894, how 1894 equaled 22. So did the name of Jesus. We've already talked about all of this, but you're seeing the connections. One, two, two. To one, it was December 2nd of 2021 that I sat down and went through this, this whole thing. Did a whole video on it. Okay. But now we have the circle, we have the triangle, we have the square. What is this showing us? And if we look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 spots. 12. Okay, well, 12 is uh, the number 37 is the 12th prime, but we also have the 12 disciples of Christ. There's 12 months in a year. Or is this pointing to the 12 signs of the Zodiac? 12 disciples, 12 months, 12 Zodiac signs. And this is where things, I think, are starting to tie into, I mentioned somebody else whose work, uh, that this may be cross starting to cross-reference. There may be a convergence going on here where my research and this person's research are now connecting and possibly may end up validating both. And the person that I'm talking about is Micah Dank. He's an astrotheologist, and he, in my opinion, has 
proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Bible is it's an allegory. It's showing the zodiac signs and how Christ is moving through each one of the zodiac signs. Now, I'm still exploring Micah's work, so I'm not going to speak on his behalf. I'll wait until he, you know, is able to come on the show. He's he's already expressed interest in it. So hopefully we can make that happen. But it's so interesting to me how <laughs> this seems to be taking place. Like how I'm arriving to this through basically numerology, uh, gematria, and just having these numbers appear to me the way that they have. And then finding these connections, going down this rabbit hole, and, and now getting to this point. Now remember... 37 is also another important number because there's that also that website that I'm still going through and researching called the 37 Jesus Code. And I had said earlier about those, those symbols for the sun. We had five distinct symbols for the sun. We're going to have we, uh, five um, solstice solar eclipses, which, I mean, we've already had some. We have two left. And I had asked the question once before, are we talking about the sun S-O-N or the sun S-U-N and in how many cultures they are one and the same? It really seems to be pointing in that direction. Big time. It seems to be like, I don't know, like we're seeing the creation story or references to the creation story. And maybe this is just even further proof indicating that, yes, this is a simulation. We were created. We were seated here. You know, when people talk about the the Big Bang Theory, my brother and I were just talking about this yesterday, as a matter of fact. And, you know, he said, you know, it's like we're just supposed to believe that there was this explosion and then everything just was created out of the explosion. I said, well, think of it as the explosion wasn't really an explosion. It was just simply whoever it was that flipped the switch that turned it on, (laughs) just turned on the simulation and boom, it was all there. Just like you would in a program or a game, you know, you have to turn it on and boom, it all loads up. It's all right there. It was just a thing, idea I threw out at him. But he was like, whoa, I never thought of it like that. And when you think of it in that way, it's it starts to paint a whole different picture. So we get to these possible connections to the Zodiac. And the reason I'm, I'm going that direction is because when you look at the, the uh, gematria, if I can find out where I put all this. Yeah. So remember when I had split the numbers up and I started looking at Jesus. And the name Jesus gave us the value of 985, which reduces to 22 which is important because going back to in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, gave us the value of 1894, which reduces to 22. So does Jesus. And then the whole full Jesus Christ, which again, Christ is not his last name, but it's just a title, gave us I am summer solstice solar eclipse, his true coded scriptures. But Jesus by itself, 985, the other connections are find the zodiac proof. Also has the value of 985. Find 
the Zodiac proof. That's what we're doing. I am named true prophet of God. A matrix is a proof of a God. God is the alphabet and the number. We're talking about gematria and numbers. Reformat the matrix. The days shortened. Okay? This all, they all have the same value of 985. Why does the days shortened play into this? Well, listening to Micah Dink's uh, work, he talks about how, and again, I haven't really dove that deep into his stuff, but I'm just kind of going off of memory. He talks about how, I think it's on December 21st, the sun sets, you know, the days are shortened. And I remember him saying something like the sun moves sideways across the sky like a crab and then rises back up on the 25th, which is the rebirth or the birth of Christ. That's why we say that Christ was born on December 25th, even though I think it's been proven that he's, he wasn't. But we're not talking about Christ. We're talking about the sun, S-U-N. So, yeah. Very interesting connections. And again, back to that, even back to that, that Rotas or Sator, you know, square, you know, how, because <laughs> at first I didn't think this was leading to anything, but the more you look, the more you find. And to get the same symbol and to get alpha and omega, which is the beginning and the end, how that ties back into, you know, the beginning is the end and the end is the beginning. It, it's again pointing towards that whole reset that when it starts over, it's not, it, it, it's not an end. You know, like I know that that, that article uh, that Didier Sornay was in that, you know, he was mentioned, it was called Apocalypse 2058. But that's their wording. Apocalypse, not mine. And the many deadly diseases of the apocalypse, that was in Gematria. That's not me putting the word apocalypse in there. And apocalypse has such a negative meaning to it, like it's the ultimate end. But I don't think that's what it's, it's truly telling us. I just think it, it's, it's saying it's an end, but there's something else after it. It's, there's a, another beginning. It's going to repeat. The beginning is the end, and the end is the beginning. So, there you have it, folks. I mean, just more interesting connections, the way that this started to unravel and, and, and present itself. I mean, I never thought to connect those. I mean, yeah, we looked at it the one time we got the infinity symbol, but that was from Vortex Math. But I'm just going by how the numbers presented themselves in that sequence. 369, 258, 147, zero, and then it repeats. And it gives us this perfect symbol. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So, like I said, I have reached out to Micah Dank. Um, I'm, I purchased all of his books. I'm currently reading them now. Um, and I need to uh, set up a time with him, but he has expressed interest on coming on the show. Um you know, he's busy this week, but he said possibly next week or the week after. So I just need to send him some times uh, and possible days and see when he's open. So, yeah, we could have a really popular guest on the next episode. So there you have it, folks. I just wanted to show you these connections and how they just keep going all over the place and um, how things just kind of keep going back to this whole creation story and the idea of it being a simulation, in my opinion. Um, you know, I know it, I understand it's not everyone's, you know, opinion or belief and that that's perfectly fine. I, I could be totally wrong. You know, not going to say that I'm, I know everything. That's just, I'm just looking at the information and that's where I'm taking it. So yeah, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how this 
once Micah has a chance to look at this and we can discuss and maybe even, maybe this will just even go even deeper. Who knows? Who knows? But it would be awesome if my research and his research happen to connect and they just end up validating one another. That would be amazing. So, all right, folks, until next time, I uh, hope everyone takes care. Hope everyone's staying healthy and safe. Uh, hopefully someday we'll get through all this COVID bullshit and life will go back to normal, but who knows? So until next time, everyone take care and we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.